Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do problem seven in your textbook on chapter two on page 66. And uh, this problem asks us to identify the feasible region for the following set of constraints. Okay, and it has some equations with inequalities in them. And what I did is I took these, these, these equations and I set them up on Excel in this way. So uh, go ahead and look at this. I'm gonna, and you may want to pause the video and set this up on Excel. Just type it in the way I've typed it in here. And then once you've uh, finished it, then uh, unpause the video and you can continue along with me. Okay, so pause the video right now. Okay, you should be back now. And you should have typed all these into Excel. And so we're given and you obviously could see what we did. We're given uh, two variables, A and B, and these are the and these are the constants in front of the variables on this side of the equation. On the right side of the equation are these these variables, and we want to find the infeasible region. So I'm going to move this out of the side off to the side now, so we can work. And uh, so simply, what you want to do is you want to find the intercepts. So we're going to find the intercepts. Okay. So, so for this first one, uh, for this equation right here, what I could probably do is I could probably copy this down here. Well, let's do it this way. I'm just going to say, I'm going to take these and copy them down here. And for this first one, we could say if uh, a is zero, then what does b have to be? So if this is an equal sign, if a is zero, then what times 0 0.25 is equal to 30? Well, this is pretty easy to do. This is basically going to be equal to 30 divided by 0.25. So I typed in equals this, this cell divided by this cell. So I just clicked on it. Okay, and then if I click enter, it's going to give me the answer. So 120 times 0.25 equals 30, right? Because this is zero. Now I can say if, if B is zero, then what does A have to be? So this is not here anymore because zero times 0.25 is zero. So if A is zero, or if B is zero, then A, what times 0.5 is equal to 30? And you probably do this on your head. Six, half of 60 is 30, right? Well, you want to use a formula. And in Excel, you don't want to do things in your head. You don't want to type numbers in where you can use a formula. So I'm going to go equals this divided by this now. And the answer is 60. So that's my intercepts for my first one. So now we're going to approach this one right here. So again, I'm going to say on, on this on, on, on this equation, this inequality, we say if this is zero, then what does this have to be? Well, this is five, so five times what equals 250. So again, you can probably do that in your head. It's probably 50. But again, just do the simple. You're going to go equals this divided by this, right? And then, and then, and then you're going to say if this is zero, then this is going to be equal to, well, this would probably be 250, but we're going to still use the equation equals this divided by this. And one more, we're going to go zero. So this is going to be equal to this divided by this. This is zero. And this is going to be equal to this divided by that. Okay. So those are all our, our intercepts. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make this look nice by putting a little border around it. Maybe center it. Okay. So now in order to find the feasible reasons, we want to graph these these all all these intercepts onto our onto our uh, onto Excel. That's actually pretty easy to do Excel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna we're gonna say that A is the horizontal axis or normally what you would see is the X axis and B is the vertical axis. That's the way we're gonna say that's the way I want it. You could do it both the other way around, but since this is listed first, we'll say this is A in the horizontal axis and this is listed second, this is the vertical axis. So so that's what we want to try to do. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to simply highlight these. 
and I'm gonna go up above, I'm gonna go to insert, and I wanna go to scatter, and I'm gonna hit the down arrow. I want the scatter that has these lines, not the ones that have curves, and not the one that doesn't have a line, but I want this one here that has lines, so I'm gonna click on that. Okay, and then we're just simply gonna check it. Okay, so, uh, so this is this is supposed to be 60, zero, all right? Is, that, is this intercepted on 60? No. So you, the way I, the way this happens is always going to come out backwards if you do it if you do it the way I do it. Uh, if you run, if you, but if you do it a different way, anyways, this is a better way to ch better to check it. So anyway, I have the 60 on the vertical axis, right? And the 60, if this is the horizontal axis, that should be here. And the 120, so it needs to be flipped. So I'm just going to click here on switch for one column. So it flips it, so now, so now I have 60, 0, and this, this, the, the coordinates at this point is 60, 0. And this is 0 and 120, and the coordinates at that point are 0 and 120. Okay. Now another thing I could do, I could go here to, again, make sure you're, you're clicked on, you want to be clicked on this, on this uh, chart. And you want to look for, uh, it depends on what Excel version you're using, but you want to look for something that says, I'm, on this Excel, this is 2010, I'm going to go to Layout, and then I'm going to go to Axis Titles, and I'm going to go Primary Horizontal Title, Below Axis, and then I'm just going to go here, I'm going to type equals that, right? And then I'm going to do it again, I'm going to go Axis Titles, Primary Vertical Title, and we'll just say rotated axis. And then I'm going to click here again. I'm going to go equals that. So I know that I know which one is what. what and I know A is on the horizontal axis and B. I have it labeled there for us. So my first series, or this is my first equation, this graph now. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to again click on here, make sure you click on the chart. And I'm going to go back to design. And where it says select data. Now, I mean, again, like I say, depending on your version of Excel, select data may be somewhere else. So you click here. Now I'm going to go add. Okay. And there's really no series name. So we'll just leave it as series two. Now, if it have a series name, then you could click on the series name. So the X, X values for the next series are going to be here. And the Y values, now I'm going to make sure I hit the backspace. For some reason, it doesn't work if you just highlight it. And the Y values are these. My vertical axis are these. And I go, okay, so plots the next one. And I'm going to add another one. Again, we have no series name. My X values for my next one are going to be these two. And then I'm going to hit the backspace. And then I'm going to select these two. And go, okay. And then go, okay. So now, now we have graphed all, all three inequalities. Okay? Uh, so what else do we need to do? We need to find the feasible region. Okay, so the feasible region is going to be bounded by, first it says A and B are greater than zero. Well, this is A, this is A along here. So if A is greater than zero, it has to be everything to the right of this line. You can see by that arrow is pointing to the right. That's the simple way I remember these things. The arrow is pointing to the right. Well, it's got to go to the right. So everything is above zero. A is above zero, so everything's to the right of this line. And B is above zero, so everything. Yeah, basically this means to the right and above. If it's pointing to the left, it means to the left or down. Okay, so this is right and above. So so everything this way. So basically it means everything's in the first quadrant. That's what this constraint means. Everything is in the upper right quadrant of your Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so the next one says that it says uh, it's, gra it's greater than. Okay, so first of all, we knew that this is the first equation, so it's the blue one. So greater than would mean everything is to the right. This arrow is pointing to the right. So I remember when I see right, that means uh, this means to the to the right or above. Okay, simple thing to remember. And this means 
to the left or below. That's something you just always want to remember. Okay. So 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 picture in your mind. You can't. This is very hard to do in Excel. So remember, it was this. It's this, this line here is what we're looking at. And remember, that was the first one we did, so it's the blue one. So since it's to the right, you're going to be shading it that way. Okay, so you can think of maybe shade it light gray, the color gray. So you say everything shaded to, to the right and above this line is shaded light gray. Okay? And then the next one, it says uh, to the right and above, and that's the, that's the second one, so it would be the red line. So again, this one, it would be shaded everything from here up and from here and from here over will be shaded light gray again. Okay? Uh, so now this is shaded in here a little darker gray. Right? But it's, it hasn't been shaded down here at all in any of these. And then this next one is a light green line. Which way is that pointing? That's to the left. And remember what I say? To the left or below. So this would be shaded down. And then this whole triangle here would be shaded light gray. So that would show that this, is, this area right here, 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 here and here are shaded the darkest. So that would be my feasible region. And the problem is we don't know these points, right? We don't know what these points are. We can guess them. This one is maybe about 20 or 20, 25 and maybe 92 or something. We want to, we want to calculate it. Now, um, on the, on the, on the assignment I gave you, I told you about there's a, it shows you how to do something called Kramer's rule, or you could solve solve each one of these equations algebraically. But I'm going to show you how to do it um, using a little bit simpler method. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, A and B, and I want to find the corner points of these two. Well, this is the blue and green, right? So the blue and green is is uh, the first and the third, okay? So the first and the third. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it down here. And the third, I take that. The third one's this one. I copy it down here. Okay, so now... I want to find out and what variables are A and B the same between if I solve these two equations and I make these equal signs, what would what would A and B that be the same? Because if the, because if those two lines are crossing right here, the A and B have to be the same. Okay. So what I'm gonna do and uh Hold on one second. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do... Now, this may seem a little bit funny to you because I'm going to use something called matrix algebra. But this is really the quickest way to do this on Excel. So, uh, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go... I'm going to highlight where I want my A and B. Okay, where I want, want to solve it. So, it's two places. So I've got to highlight two places here. And I'm going to start typing equals. I'm going to do something called matrix multiply and multiply. And then I want to do matrix inverse, M-I-N-V-E-R-S-E. -E. And I want to take the inverse of this little matrix right here. So I'm going to close the parentheses. And I'm going to take it times these two right here. Okay. And I'm going to close the parentheses. And I'm going to go control shift. Enter. Now make sure you do control shift. You gotta hold down control, hold down shift on the lower left hand key side of your keyboard, and then hit the enter key, E N T E R. It's gonna give me where so so this one here is at 93 and 13.333. Okay, so now that, this gets easier as you do it. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna I'm gonna put show you what this looks like. Equals uh well if I click on it. Let me do it this way. If I click on it, you can see uh, what it looks like. Okay. But also, if you look up here without clicking, if you just click on it once, if you look up here, it has these little brackets around it. 
Okay. You can't put the, you can't tape those brackets in. You got to hit that Control Shift Enter like I was showing you. So let me go ahead and equals uh, uh, get formula. And now you can see what that looks like. All right. So now we're going to do it again. So this is the blue and the red. The blue and the red are the first two. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy these down. And, you know, copy these. Actually, you know, since I've already done this once, I could actually copy this down here. And actually, since I've already done it, this is what's really cool about Excel. I could take this and copy it down here and go paste. And it's going to, as long as I put everything in the same spot, like this, there's a blank here. And as long as this, this looks identically to this as far as where the cells are, it's going to have relative references. And it's going to actually, it's actually going to reference everything correctly. And it's going to give you the answer automatically. So it's going to keep your formulas in there and reference this above as long as everything's spaced correctly. So this one's at 38.8. That sounds about right, and 42 something. That sounds about right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and copy this down again. Copy and paste. But now I want the green and the red. The green and the red are the last two, so I'm going to take these two. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to paste these in here, and it shows that these two. At 166.67 and 16.667. So now I have now I have my uh, my corner points, or you could say uh, points that bound the feasible region. Okay. So let me let's go ahead and list them here. We have we'll go we'll go uh, uh, A and B. So what are my first two corner points? They're these two. I'm gonna show you another trick. You can go. I'm gonna highlight these two. I'm gonna go equals transpose, which means kind of means flip in matrix language. I'm gonna highlight these two, close it, and then Control Shift Enter. Okay, what happened there? Let's see. Transpose B. Okay, well, we, let's not do it that way. Let's do it this way. I'm going to go equals this, and this equals that, right? And this one equals this, and this one equals that, and this one equals this, and this one equals that. And there you have it, that's the answer. Okay, so I could highlight all this. Normally I'd like you to put your answers in yellow so I can see where you did it. Now my, that's my answer to the problem. Okay, so what I probably should have done here, let me go ahead and I'm gonna go insert. I wanna insert a line. So I'm gonna click on nine, no row nine. I'm gonna right click and go insert. And here I'm gonna put solution. And then I click on solution. I'm going to go bold and under, make it up a little nicer. So it seems like a lot, but if you do this a couple times, it's really not that hard to do. And uh, I know I went fairly quickly, but the nice thing is you can pause the video if you have to, and uh, you should be all right. Okay, that's it for that one.